Alejandro Trevino Morales, more commonly known as Omar or Z42, was a key member of the criminal organization named Los Cetas. This criminal organization was easily one of Mexico's most dangerous drug cartels. It was formed by a retired military officer and deserters from an elite wing of the Mexican Special Forces, who were enticed by a much better pay than what they were receiving in the military. These ex-military men brought their training and efficiency to the group, essentially causing Los Cetas to be a paramilitary organization. Los Cetas was initially created as an enforcement arm of the Gulf Cartel. However, it eventually broke off and became a standalone organization, leaving a violent rivalry between itself and the parent organization, the Gulf Cartel. While their primary objective was drug trafficking, Los Cetas is also known for running sex trafficking rings, and for flamboyant displays of violence, such as beheading and or torturing their victims and displaying the bodies of rivals, they had killed by hanging them from bridges and, similar places in order to threaten other cartels. Like any member of Los Cetas, Omar was notorious for such indiscriminate acts of violence. He is even popularly known for bragging that he had killed 1,000 people. But apart from being infamous for his violence, Omar was also popularly considered the leader of Los Cetas. The leadership tenure of Omar was very short, but that of his brother before him was even shorter. Miguel Trevino, alias C40, was leader of Los Cetas for less than a year before he was arrested in July 2013. After his arrest, Omar was believed to be the natural successor to his brother as the leader of the organization. Omar was known to be less intelligent than his brother. In fact, he had trouble holding the group together, during his time as Los Cetas leader because the people didn't see him as a capable or strong leader. However, even though his intelligence and reputation as a capable leader was not comparable to his brother's, Omar had a strong reputation for being ruthlessly violent. This ruthlessness can be traced all the way back to when he was still much younger. Alejandro Omar Trevino Morales was born on January 26, 1974 in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas. Before he joined Los Cetas, him and his brothers were already experienced criminals. They would steal cars and carry out schemes to extort money from people. Their entry into Los Cetas gave them an enabling environment for their violent tendencies to thrive. With the Zetas, Omar trafficked drugs, murdered innocent people and members of rival groups, and kidnapped people, among the other crimes he committed. In 2013, Narco Banners, signed in his name appeared at several locations in Mexico. The message on these banners threatened the editor of a local newspaper, called Zocalo. In addition, Omar is allegedly responsible for many kidnappings and homicides, that occurred between 2005 and 2006 in Nuevo Laredo which is the traditional stronghold of Omar and his brothers. He is also suspected of being the supply source of thousands, of grams of cocaine smuggled from Mexico to the United States. Omar is also believed to have been involved in the torture and murder of 72 Central American migrants, in what is commonly known as the San Fernando Massacre of 2010. The torture and murder of these migrants occurred as punishment, because they refused to be used as drug mules by Los Cetas. Again, Omar is suspected to have been involved in an arson attack on a casino in Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. This arson occurred in 2011 and it left 52 people dead and several others injured. Although the precise motive behind the arson was never known for sure by the public, there were reports that the casino may have refused to pay protection money to a gang, which is believed to be Los Cetas. The notoriety of Omar didn't stay within the borders of Mexico. Even in the United States, he had acquired a criminal status. In 2008, he was charged in a federal indictment in the United States District of Columbia for drug-related crime and for aiding and abetting. In 2010, the United States Department of the Treasury sanctioned Omar under the Foreign Narcotics Kingpin Designation Act, commonly known as the Kingpin Act, for his active involvement in drug trafficking along with more than 50 other international criminals. The Kingpin Act practically froze all of Omar's assets in the United States. It also prevents United States citizens and companies from conducting any kind of business activity with Omar. Omar made it to the list of wanted criminals on both sides of the border. In Mexico, he was one of the 37 most wanted drug lords as of 2009. A reward of up to 30 million pesos, which was about $2 million at the time, was offered for the capture of Omar. In the United States, the reward offered by the Drug Enforcement Agency, DEA, for information leading to Omar's arrest and or conviction was set at $5 million. But it wasn't only governments and law enforcement agents that put a bounty on Omar. Even rival criminal organizations offered mouth-watering rewards for Z42. They advertised their offers using narco banners. For instance, 
In July 2013, banners appeared in cities across Tamaulipas, Mexico. These banners offered a reward of $1 million for anyone who could give them information on the whereabouts of Z-42. These banners were signed in the name of the Legionnaires which is a group that broke off from Los Zetas and started functioning independently, just like Los Zetas broke off from the Gulf Cartel. However, it was the Mexican Federal Police and, the Mexican Army that eventually captured the notorious drug lord. The arrest of Alejandro Omar Trevino Morales occurred in 2015. It happened at dawn, around 4 a.m. on Wednesday 4 March. In a joint operation by the Mexican Army and Federal Police, Trevino was found at one of his homes in the Monterrey suburb of San Pedro Garcia Gracia. The building he was found in was a luxury home and the suburb was one of the wealthiest locations in Mexico. According to the reports of local media, not a single shot was fired during this high-profile arrest. Neighbors around the luxury home told El Universal newspaper, that the house had been bought about six months, before the arrest by a family that was very private. According to one of the neighbors, the family, kept themselves to themselves and did not mingle with other neighbors. In a neighborhood not far away from, the one where Omar was found and arrested, the Mexican authorities also captured his financial operator Carlos Arturo Jimenez Encinas, along with four other people. Four days later, Omar was transported under heavy security to the Federal Social Readaptation Center No. 1, which is a maximum security prison in Almoloya de Juarez, Mexico City. He was also paraded before television cameras. According to the director of the National Security Commission, Monty Alejandro Rubido Garcia, the arrest of Los Zetas leader, Omar, was aided by the arrest of his brother a few years before. The previous arrest of Miguel Trevino, who was Omar's elder brother and the former leader of Los Zetas, was followed by intelligence gatherings which eventually led to the arrest of Omar and some of his associates. On March 23, Omar was officially charged in a federal court in Toluca, Mexico City. He was charged for money laundering and for the violation of Mexico's federal law of firearms and explosives. The sentence given to him by the judge was 18 years long. The arrest of the Zetas leader was a big win worth celebrating for the Mexican government. Making the moment of victory even more rewarding was the fact that just a few days before, the Mexican government had also captured another drug lord, Servando Latuta Gomez who was the leader of the Knights Templar cartel in Mihuacan State, Mexico. The Mexican government was set to enjoy another victory that same month. On March 23, 2015, another member of Los Zetas was arrested. His name is Ramiro Perez Moreno, commonly known by the alias El Rana or the Frog. Ramiro Perez Moreno was a potential successor of Omar as the leader of Los Zetas. He was captured along with four other men. At the point of his capture, Ramiro was in possession of six kilos of cocaine and marijuana, a hand grenade, and rifles. These arrests were particularly timely and central in improving the image of the Mexican government, which had come under criticisms for failing to suppress the gang-related violence that was rampant in some areas of Mexico. According to Mike Vigil, who is a retired chief of international operations for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration DEA, the arrest of Omar Trevino means that they had taken care of the last of the solid leaders within Los Cetas. Los Cetas' loss of the two brothers Miguel and Alejandro Omar Trevino, who were the organization's leaders, as well as Ramiro Moreno, who was a potential successor, was a huge blow to the criminal syndicate, but even that was not enough to guarantee the end of the organization. Though Los Cetas had a large vacuum where it concerned leadership, speculations were that the group would likely splinter into smaller organizations, rather than disintegrate completely. These speculations turned out to be accurate. At one point in time, Los Cetas was Mexico's largest drug cartel in terms of geographical presence. After breaking off from the Gulf Cartel, they quickly overtook their rival gang, the Sinaloa Cartel. However, now they have fragmented into smaller organizations and the influence and strength that they have now is nothing compared to what they had while they were still a united organization. While a lot of the fragmentation that has occurred within the group was as a result of their lack of solid leadership since Omar's arrest, that isn't the main reason. Los Zetas are a popularly unstable group, with a lot of internal squabbles that were ongoing even before Omar's short tenure as the group's leader began. As for Alejandro Omar Trevino, who was popularly described as the most bloodthirsty leader of Mexico's most violent cartel, he is currently behind bars in one of the most secure prisons in Mexico. His original sentence was 18 years in prison. However, he has been found guilty of other charges. For instance, in 2012 in the United States, Omar and two of his brothers were found guilty of using front companies in Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma to launder Los Cetas profits. 
the brothers used U.S.-based horse breeding companies to cover up their illegal money. This charge and others are very likely to leave him behind bars for a long time. Don't forget to like this video and share it. So you don't miss out on new videos, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications. Until next time.